do a real quick review on this uh, rigid oscillating quarter sheet sander. I picked this up maybe a couple of years ago now and I've been using it a little bit. I wanted to give you a, a little insight on what I found a, a, as I've been using it. Um, maybe it can help you out before you decide to purchase one. Uh, so this is the rigid again it's a quarter sheet oscillating sander. Um, when you take the regular sheets of sandpaper, fold them in half and tear it and fold it in half again and tear it, you're going to get that quarter sheet that fits this thing perfectly. Um, and of course, you've got your spring-loaded clips that hold the sheet of sandpaper on. I'll show you how to do that in a minute. Um, so how to do this with one hand. Maybe I just move this around here. Hopefully bear with me one second. So this is what holds the sandpaper on. You can see on the very front how that lifts up and it'll pinch the sandpaper in place. Underneath you've got the dust holes. These obviously allow the dust to go into the dust bag that's here. It does a pretty good job, but remember guys, you're doing sand, you're sanding. It's, I mean, it's just gonna get dusty no matter what. It's gonna get everywhere, but uh, this, this dust collection system does collect some dust. I mean, it fills up pretty good. You do have to uh, you have to clean it out every once in a while to get the most amount of efficiency. Uh, one thing I really do like about this, it comes with a 12 foot cord. I mean, this 12 foot cord is plenty long enough. One of the nice things about it, if you've ever used something with a shorter cord, a three inch, a three foot cord, or something like that. Sometimes that when you connect it to the extension cord, this piece creates a bit of a bump and it gets caught on your project. So this 12 foot cord is very nice. It does have a light to let you know that there's power getting to the sander, which is nice too. Um, I mean, clearly you're going to be using this with an extension cord for the most part, but having that ex additional uh, length on the cord is, is really handy. Of course, it's got this Velcro piece to help keep it tied nice together. Um, this is not a variable speed sander. You turn it on and it's just one speed. It's go. Uh, that's one thing I would say um, I wish that I had bought a variable speed because in some cases you might need, uh, you don't need such an aggressive speed, but you can always tone down the type of sandpaper that you use as well. Go maybe with a 220 as opposed to a 180 grit sandpaper. You've got your on and off buttons here. Uh, mark pretty well. It's just it's in a good spot right here with your hand. You can turn it on and off pretty easily as you need to. I find sometimes as I'm using it, I wind up turning it off on accident. Um, you know, for the most part, that's really it. You know, again, like I said, you've got the two springs. There's one in the back. I can show you a little trick on how to uh, to easily load the paper on here. Um, there is a pad on the underside of this as well. This is uh, somewhat soft. And it does get torn up if you've got a, a project with some interesting pieces you're trying to work around. Um, but uh, yeah, all in all, it's a very good uh, oscillating sander. Um, oh, it does come with this as well. This, when you put the sandpaper on, and again, I'll show you when I put the, when the, put the quarter sheet on here. These holes punch a hole in the sandpaper that match the dust collection holes on the bottom of the of the sander and it, there's an image on here I believe you can see that it shows you how to line that up with the sander so you know because you can't see these holes when the papers on here so you know how to line it up you just take the image of the sander go right up in here put it in this little corner and press it in there and you'll put some holes in there I'll show you what that looks like now so here's a quarter sheet I've already torn that is to be 220. Let me release these. If you leave it uh, the way that you're supposed to, you know, with the pad side down, naturally the gravity is going to want to open this spring up here. So you're going to be able to load the paper in. You want to make sure that when you load the paper in, I always use the clean side, the factory side of the sandpaper in here. I'm going to try to do this so you can see it. Um, so then that way I know it's relatively straight when I load this up. 
So then once it's there, you grab this first one, put it in the slot there, and then you can fold it over. Make sure these corners don't fold over. I didn't love that on there very straight. Now this is the tricky one. The one in the back is the tricky one. So again, if you lay it flat, see if I can get this cord out of our way. If you lay it flat, you'll see, again, the gravity pulls this up and makes the space that you need to fold that under. It's easier if you just give this a little fold beforehand and then you can tuck that right up inside there on both sides. And then you press it down and there you go. It's locked in place here. It's locked in place in the front. Now again, you notice there's no holes here. So what you would do is you would line this up. There's your image. There's your sander. You put it right up into the top. Tuck this corner right here. This corner is the important one. You get it right there and then press down fairly hard. Pull it away. And there are your holes to ensure that you've got the proper holes inside so it can allow the dust to go into the collection system here. Again, all in all, a very good sander. Does the job just right. Uh, the only thing I think I would probably do different on this would be uh, add some sort of variable speed. Uh, but outside of that, it's very good, very powerful. And uh, hopefully this, this YouTube video helped you out.